Hey, we're going to cover several things tonight. We're going to go over the best baits, the top baits for fishing Lake Fork this weekend, as well as our other lakes in this area. Give you a current rundown on the weather conditions you're going to face. Try to give you as much advice and help as we can so that you can have as successful of a fishing weekend as possible. We are going to have some pretty weather this weekend. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to cover a couple other things we got going on. We're going to talk a little bit about the Humminbird 360. we got a video coming out Monday that I'm interested to see y'all's feedback on. Uh, we went out and used the Humminbird 360 to fish kind of a different style than what we did in the previous video with that unit. Uh, and I was really pleased with how the unit worked and how it came out. So we're going to discuss that in detail. Of course, I'm going to answer every one of your questions that I can possibly get to. And do me a favor, as you guys are joining us tonight, drop me a comment. Let me know who I'm talking to. Let me know who's in here with us. Hit a thumbs up. Share it. I don't know. Whatever y'all do, make it make it happen. Where more people get in here, that would be great. First comment we got tonight is coming from Gary Payne. What's up, brother? Appreciate you. Cody Mays is in the house tonight. We got Big John. We got a few of y'all creeping in here. Y'all keep dropping them comments. We'll say some hellos. We got Casey and Gaby, Sharon Davidson, Kevin Jones, Dusty Newton, OMG Texas 420. Several of y'all starting to pop in here now. That is awesome. As always, you guys rock the house. We got the PB Dad, Kyle C199, Jared Carson, Dustin Wright, Ronnie Green. A lot of the usual suspects joining us tonight. Appreciate it, guys. Very, very, very much, man. First of all, Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve. Uh, I've been over at my in-law's house, man. We've been having a big dinner. Wife made a big batch of chicken and dumplings. And I'm pretty sure that I just ate more different types of desserts in one night tonight than I've eaten the rest of the year combined. Like, I don't think I've eaten that many dessert settings all year is what I just did tonight. I'm, oh. Ugh, I'm not feeling real great right now. I'm not gonna lie to you. My energy's a little low. That'd be the that'd be that sugar crash that you might say, I guess. But uh, man, it was a great night. Got to hang out with the family. Uh, we're gonna spend all day with the family tomorrow. I'm taking tomorrow completely off from all things fishing related. Uh, it's gonna be gonna be a good day. Gonna be a blessed day. We're all fortunate to be here. Speaking of, one of our own is not gonna be home with his family on Christmas. He's in a hospital fighting. Fighting some, uh, fighting some complications from that started with COVID and has gone on to some crazy stuff. But uh, Mr. Mark Pack, man, we said a prayer for him last night on the Facebook Live. Please keep Mark Pack in your prayers. He's a great, great man, a uh, family man, and he's he's in a little bit of a fight right now in the hospital. So y'all keep Mr. Mark Pack in your prayers. All right, let's cover a few things. Let's talk about a couple things. First, Lake Palestine. We now have on the Fish Life app, which a lot of you, the followers of the channel, y'all be familiar with the Fish Life app. Lake Palestine now has a premium package on the Fish Life app. You can go subscribe to it if you like to fish Palestine, if you got tournaments on Palestine. I know there's a lot of tournaments to get fished out there. Uh, man, we're going to be updating those every month. We just released this package. We'll have another update coming out towards the end of the month in January. And uh, it'll give you the most current and detailed information that you've ever seen. I promise you that. If you subscribe to that, you will not be disappointed. Lake Palestine's up and running now. It's up and running for on the Google Play Store. You can go to Google Play Store for Android devices. You can also go to www.fishlife.net. And the life, of course, is spelled with Y-L-Y-F-E. Um, for all devices, including Apple. Now, as far as it being available directly in the iTunes Store for Apple... We are totally at the mercy of Apple on when they actually go go ahead and put their stamp of approval. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks. Sometimes it takes a couple months. I never know with Apple, so we'll just have to see how that comes about with them. So, anyways, uh, what else? Let let's before we get into baits, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this Humminbird Mega 360 unit. I have been so impressed with this that I've only been in a boat with it twice. And you guys saw one video, if you watched the channel, you saw the video where we were looking at the rock piles and brush piles and caught some really, caught like a five fish stringer of really nice bass, had a big stringer of fish uh, in just a couple hours utilizing that to make sure that our bait stayed on target the entire day. Really impressed with it that day. Took it out, uh, it was either yesterday or day before yesterday, I can't remember, day before yesterday I think it was. Took it out to a grass lake, went down to Lake Fairfield and fished outside grass edges because we've been having the cold weather you know we have bluebird skies so we fished the deeper outside grass edges and, and we fished a jerk bait over them and that can be a little bit tedious that can be a little bit tough because if you miss your cast and you jerk that jerk bait down into that grass and it gets watered up it just wastes your cast and there's no doubt about it that hummingbird 360 i mean it showed us literally you could anytime the grass line would reach out a little bit or cut in a little bit 
you, you could make the cast exactly where you needed to make it to fish that bait on the perfect angle at all times. And we were able to cover so much more water and make so many more casts that stayed in a good strikeable position throughout the cast than we would have any other way. The wind was blowing, which made it another challenge because uh, we weren't just spot locking. We were moving. We were covering water as we fished, going down that grass line. And that Hummingbird 360 really made a huge difference for us the other day. It's unbelievable. And fishing it on grass lines, I mean, you can work the edges like never before with that Hummingbird 360. You know exactly where every little point and cut and every indention is in that outside grass line. It's unbelievable how effective it can be for that. So I was just thoroughly impressed. We'll have the full video of that Monday showing you everything about how we did it and, and all that good stuff. So be watching for that as well. All right, let's talk about weather conditions, uh, fishing conditions for this weekend. You know, guys, fishing has been kind of pretty good, really. Uh, even on Lake Fork, on the cold water lakes, like, it's it's pretty good. Now, tomorrow's probably going to be pretty tough. If you go, I don't know how many people are going to be fishing on Christmas Day. If you do go, tomorrow will probably be pretty tough. It'll be a cold front, post-frontal day. Very, very calm uh, winds. Bluebird Scott, that's going to be your tougher days. If you're going out Saturday and Sunday, however, it's going to warm back up. You're going to get that south wind. In fact, Sunday, you're going to get so much south wind, it's actually going to get a little bit dangerous on the bigger lakes. We are going to have some lake wind advisories on Sunday. So if you're planning on going to big water on Sunday, please be cautious, be careful, uh, plan ahead. Don't let that wind catch you. You know, it'll, you'll be out there in a cove somewhere, and it'll pick up in the middle of the day, and then you got a tough time getting back. So uh, be cognizant of the wind on Sunday if you're going out. It, it could be a problem. So... But Saturday and Sunday, we'll get that south wind, get that warmer weather. And I think Saturday and Sunday are going to be pretty good days to fish. I mean, it's not just going to be gangbusters number-wise, most likely, on cold water lakes. Um, but you should be able to get some bites, a good number of bites. And really, this time of year, you're always in line to catch good quality size fish. And every once in a while, you can catch an absolute giant, sometimes a fish of your lifetime, in the winter. Um, so how will we attack it? Well... Tomorrow, a jerk bait would be my best friend. Uh, I would really, with it, and with it being calm, I would probably go with a jerk bait and a finesse jig. The, the best pattern on Lake Fork specifically has hands down been the jig lately. Uh, for me, for me it has. A jerk bait's also been somewhat effective at times. It, it will get you some bites, but the jig has been a much more. Now that may be because I love fishing a jig so much and I'll leave it in my hands a lot longer and I'll really slow down with it. That's the key to getting the bites with that jig right now is you got to get around that creek channel and you got to really, really, really slow down with it. That, that is the key to getting the bites with the jig. So uh, what baits are we throwing? So let's show you some of that. Like I said, if I was going out tomorrow, bluebird skies, cold, post-frontal day, uh, no wind to speak of tomorrow, I don't think it's supposed to be. I got two baits that I'm going to be throwing. I'm going to get around that same creek channel, but instead of throwing my normal half ounce black and blue jig, I'm actually going to go down to the six cents finesse jig. Still got the same black and blue color theme. Uh, this one actually has a little brown mixed in with the black and blue on the skirt, but the trailer's black and blue. But I'm going to throw that little small profile finesse jig in those same creek channels that I would be throwing the normal half ounce black and blue jig in tomorrow's conditions post frontal. I'm also going to be throwing a, uh, a shad pattern translucent type of jerk bait. You're going to have bluebird skies. You're going to have calm conditions. Man, you need to go the least visibility possible, which is a shad pattern translucent. I don't know how well y'all can see. That bait's not totally just clear. It's not just a foggy clear bait. It does have some yellow on it. I don't know if that'll show up. And a little bit of pink on the head. It's not really showing up on that phone camera. But uh, just a, a tr really translucent shad pattern jerk bait is going to be your best bet. And I'm going to throw that jig in creek channels, and I'm going to focus anywhere. I might be as shallow as 6 foot in the creek channel, and I might be as deep as, say, 12 to 15 foot in that creek channel. That's kind of the different depth ranges I'm going to focus on. Been catching a lot of fish last week, this past week, in shallower creek channels, 6 foot, 8 foot in the bottom, things like that. Even sometimes a little shallower than that, 4 and 5 foot. Not very many there. Mostly in that 6 foot to 8 foot range in the creek channels where it's been best. Tomorrow I would probably venture out a little bit deeper because of the cold front, cold weather, Saturday, Sunday, I'm gonna pick the half ounce black and blue jig back up. And I'm gonna go back into that six foot, eight foot creek channel, half ounce black and blue jig, black and blue trailer, stroker crawl is the trailer that I'm using. Uh, and I'm still going to go extremely slow. And in fact, on Sunday, if you're fishing there and you're exposed to the wind a little bit, you might even have to go up to a three quarter ounce jig just to really have a good feel for that jig in those creek channels. 
the jerk bait will still play as well. I'll uh, still because it is going to be very sunny, uh, and the water clarity is really pretty good. You know, for Lake Fork, the water clarity is really good right now, and it usually is this time of year. Uh, so I would still use those shad pattern, more translucent type of shad patterns with the sun out tomorrow and Saturday. Now Sunday, there is a chance of having some cloud cover. At that point, I would go down to more solid color shad patterns, opaque, you know, whites, grays, silvers, just solid colors, not see-through translucent colors. Still shad pattern though for me out here on Lake Fork right now. Uh, one other bait that you can throw, and I'm going to tell you, tomorrow, this bait right here will be a really, really, really solid option, especially if you can get around a little bit of vegetation, get around a little bit of grass, a quarter ounce old Bill Lewis Rat L Trap. That's a chrome blue. I'm gonna throw a chrome something or another in that sunshine tomorrow, and I'm gonna throw a quarter ounce Bill Lewis Rattle Trap. You can do, use gold chrome, you can use chrome blue. Um, gold chrome might be my favorite. I really, really like chrome blue. That's an old Lake Conroe color, and that's where I grew up, so it's a color I got a lot of confidence in. But a chrome colored quarter ounce lipless crankbait tomorrow in post frontal cold conditions. Uh, is something, listen, you're probably not going to get a lot of bites if you go out tomorrow. But this is a bait that you can put in your hands. If you keep it around grass, it usually will give you a few good quality bites a day, maybe even six or eight. So uh, it's a good bait to put in your hands and just go to work. Now, Saturday, Sunday, wind picks up, gets a little warmer. I'm going to step on up to the half ounce traps. I'm going to go with the Quake 70s. But the sun's going to be out. Guys, when the sun's out, you don't have to throw red necessarily, especially on a lake like Fork where fish see a lot of those crawfish traps. A lot of times the best thing you can do is throw a shad pattern, especially when the sun is out. So I would probably have on Saturday both a crawl pattern and a shad pattern tied on. Probably throw the shad pattern first, see how it worked out, but I would experiment back and forth until I got a bite. But again, that half-ounce trap, Weld it to your hand, go to work. You're going to get some reaction bites if you fish it long enough, especially on Saturday and Sunday with that wind and that warmer weather that's coming in. So um, there's some baits for you. I really think if you fish those baits right there, and those are three really classic baits that you can fish throughout the wintertime almost anywhere and get bites, jigs, jerk baits, and lipless crankbaits. It don't get a lot better than that in cold water, boys. And, uh, yeah, that would be... My, my game plan, you know, there, I know it's a lot. I, I talked a lot. I, I had a lot of different aspects to this weekend's game plan, but it's a three-day weekend, and we've got different weather all three days, and so there's something different about the weather on all three days. So uh, there's a lot of moving parts, and when that stuff changes, you got to change with it. Let me get up here in these comments. We've got a couple folks getting here late. Big John's trying to get y'all on the thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up, folks at home. Hit that thumbs up. I appreciate it, Big John. I appreciate every one of y'all, man. We got a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to y'all. That's right. Merry Christmas. Kyle C said he had chicken and dumplings today too. Hey, listen, dog. Like, chicken and dumplings done right is like real hard to beat. Real hard to beat. All right. Any patterns besides Creek Channel and Ben's for Biggins? Yeah, I mean. So there's three locations right now to me on Lake Fork. Now, this is just for Lake Fork. There's three locations where you can really go about con consi and have a good, consistent chance to get a big bite right now. <clears throat> One is going to, my favorite right now is going to be that Creek Channel Bend. My second favorite is going to be, uh, well, second and third are kind of tied for, it's 2A and 2B, if you ask me. They're, they're pretty equal. But, uh grass edges just the deeper grass edges there's not a lot of grass in lake fork but there is a couple areas that do have a little bit of deeper grass edges to them those areas you can grind the outside of the grass and catch some bigger fish and then of course the other thing is bridge pilings and aprons <clears throat> especially in the creeks like the big mustang creek birch creek those creek arm bridges are really good in the winter time where it's a narrower uh it pinches down where they have to go in and out of there those fish congregate to those and kind of live on them. There's just some residential fish that set up a home on those bridge pilings and aprons throughout the winter, and they're there every day. They're there every day in the wintertime. And there's some big ones that hang around there. There's some little ones. A lot of tournament guys like those areas, and there's some little ones that will hang around there, but there is some big ones that will hang around there too. Make no mistake about it. They sit down there trying to pick off one of them crappie. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're doing. 
Is a 13 plus going to be caught on fork this next year? That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't think that I know of any. I know of a couple 12s on fork this year. I don't think I know of any 13 pluses. I'm sure there was one caught. There's one caught almost every year. You just don't hear about every one of them. I know in years past, I've heard, you know, some old heads that have caught something. They ain't telling nobody. They don't want the word to get out, but I'm sure there probably will be. Almost every year, there's a 13-pounder caught on Lake Fork. It's just not always in the donation period for Sherry Lunker, or it's caught by somebody that doesn't want to donate it to Sherry Lunker. That happens as well. So my initial answer would be, I think so. But I will say this. It feels like on Lake Fork right now, while it still has just gobs and gobs and gobs of quality big bass that the vast majority of human beings consider trophy bass by all means, the, the really giant fish, we're in like a little bit of a down cycle, it seems like, on the really giant fish, the 13, 14, 15 pounders. Um, we saw one caught out of here, and we saw several 13s caught out of here a, two or th you know, a couple years ago. But this whole year this year, it, it just didn't seem like the number of really giant fish, 11, 12 pounders, 10 pounders, those numbers seemed down. Even though it still kicked out 10 pounders. Like, <laughs> it still kicked out 10 pounders. Plenty, plenty. But it just not at the normal rate that we're used to at Lake Fork. So, I mean, heck, MLF had a tournament here in March. They caught two in one tournament, um, which is amazing. They don't do that anywhere else they go. Like, to put that in perspective, all the great fisheries that MLF has fished, those were the only two 10-pounders anybody's ever caught in the Bass Pro Tour. Or MLF Cups, like, ever. And they fish Florida, they fish Louisiana, they fish everywhere. Um, so that, that puts it in perspective. There was two caught here. They don't catch them anywhere else. Yeah, it was a down year. We didn't have as many trophy bass. And even when Fork's in a down year, it's still the most unbelievable trophy bass fishery. Trophy bass fishery. Uh, I did. I saw a video somewhere. Somebody sent it to me. A guy was talking about the most overrated lakes. And if he put Fork is the number one most overrated lake. But, but the way he was defining it was the kicker. He was looking at tournament results and seeing, okay, well, the guys at the top of the tournament, they might catch a big bag, but the guys in the bottom half are like zero and – and it, he called them top-heavy lakes. And that is Fork. And I know in, in times, in spurts, it hasn't been that way. And, and in ancient history, you know, older Fork, it wasn't that way. But for the vast majority of the last 15 years, that's been Lake Fork. It is a little bit feast or famine. Uh, you, will have, you will struggle out there at times. And a lot of guys, really, really good guys, will struggle out there at times. But... <laughs> You fish Lake Fork all the time, and you will catch more giant bass than you catch anywhere else. It's just the truth of the matter. Uh, it plays out in these tournaments. There's a lot of measurable, uh, more, a lot more measurable data nowadays than there was five years ago because of the bigger tournaments that are coming here now with the way I'm in the boat stuff with Texas Fest and the MLF and all that. So we've got a lot more data now. And like I said, they come here, like every time they come here, you have multiple guys in their boat screaming, talking about that's the biggest bass I've ever caught. Like, that's what every time they come here, these professional anglers catch their personal best. Somebody does. Um, and they catch double-digit fish every time they come. And almost every tournament, that, even the hourly big bass tournaments at Fork Holds, almost every single one of them kicks out a double-digit. That's not normal. <laughs> like, that's not what happens everywhere else, so... It is down to me, and I've gone on and on, but, man, I love Lake Fork. I think about it a lot. I spend a lot of time on it. Um, so when I get to talking about it, I can talk forever about it. But it is, I think, a little bit down for the giant trophy bass that it's known for as far as numbers of those being caught. It's still more than other places. <laughs> like, just a lot more than other places. Black and blue jig because of water temp or weather or water clarity. Man, I, for me, dude, I'm just telling you, it is a, a black and blue jig. When I get to the month of December, I'll pick up a black and blue jig and I don't put it down to the end of February, early March. I just have all the faith and confidence in the wintertime on a black and blue jig. There's been a ton of those share lunkers, of 13-pound share lunkers that have been turned in from Fort that were caught on black and blue jigs in the winter months. It's just something that I have a ton of confidence in, so... For me, it's a black and blue jig in December, January, February. Regardless of water color. Regardless. What would be good to fish on Welsh Saturday? Welsh Saturday, um, 
bed fishing, if that's your thing, you can go bed fishing out there. Sometimes bed fishing can be a little tough on Welsh, especially I would imagine holiday weekend Saturday, Welsh is going to be crowded. And when Welsh gets crowded, the bed fishing can be tough. Uh, and the wind's going to make it hard to see the beds in, in some areas. So for me, wind, crowds, I'm probably going to cover a lot of water. I'm probably going to be throwing uh, a lot of weedless swim baits and chatter baits. I love throwing swim baits and chatter baits on Welsh. I've had a lot of success on them. It's a very good fishery for those two types of techniques. Uh, really, throughout the year, you can typically catch fish on <clears throat> weedless swim baits and chatter baits on Lake Welsh. Now, that being said, I have not been to Welsh in a little while, so I may be a little bit off the beaten path there. All right. Well, you guys ain't asking very many questions tonight. Just look in the next boat. Yeah, they'll be close to you. I bet Welsh will be crowded on the holiday. Typically, Welsh is always crowded around Christmas, New Year's, the, the, the turn of the year holidays. When people are off work, Welsh gets hammered pretty hard. Chatterbait worked earlier in the week on Welsh. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. It's almost, man, it's almost like they'll, in, in a swim jig, too. You tie on a swim jig, a wheelless swim bait, and a chatterbait and go to Lake Wells, almost any day of the year, they'll bite one of those three really well. Listening while baking, how about that? It is Christmas time, that's right. Do you believe that Roy Hawk caught a 16-pounder during the MLF practice? No, no, that was, that was, no. That was no truth to that whatsoever. Firecrawl chatterbait on fork this weekend, yay or nay? Uh, I mean, could, yeah. Yeah, it could be viable. You're going to have to find that grass, though. If I'm throwing a chatterbait, I want it around grass. And there, like I said, there's just not a ton of that grass on fork. So, you know, you got to find those areas for me if I'm going to fish that. I wouldn't have a problem throwing that. I, right now, for me, I would rather throw a lipless crankbait right now this time of year at this moment. Um, and I'd also rather get in that creek channel with that jig. On the bridge pilings, what is the go-to bait? On the bridge pilings, the go-to bait is a jerk bait and Alabama rig. That's the two baits. It's really the only two baits I've been using on. Slow. The bridge piling fish, you got to slow down. A lot of stuff you got to slow down, right? Like a lot of stuff. The, the jig fish, you got to slow down. And the bridge piling fish, you really got to slow down. You got to work that jerk bait. A little more subtle twitches once you get it down there. A little more subtle twitches. A little bit of pause. Uh, that Alabama rig, weird slow rolling it by those pilings. Uh, that's where most of our Alabama rig bites are coming from. So that's how we're doing it. Drop shot or Ned rig, not for me. I mean, I'm sure a lot of guys could have success on that right now. It's a good, those finesse techniques are good in the wintertime. It's just not really my deal, man. It's not really my style. I'll do it when I absolutely have to. If I can get them to bite a uh, moving bait, reaction type bait, I'm much more interested in doing that. What brand of jig do you prefer, rattle versus no? I throw no rattles. I throw the hybrid jig from Six Sense Fishing. It's got the best head design. The head is the most important part of the jig to me, in my opinion. You know, there's a ton of jigs out there. Most of them have really good hooks these days, so you don't really have to worry about that. A lot of them have good hooks. The head design is the most important part, and that hybrid jig Six Sense Fishing makes, the head design on that is the best head design that I've ever seen. It does a really good job. Usually jigs, so with jig head designs, you, you kind of have a sacrifice. It's a, it's a give and take. You can either have a jig that hooks the fish really, really well on the top of the head, but that jig's going to get hung up a lot more. Or you can have a, a jig that's really, really weedless and doesn't ever get hung up, but it doesn't hook the fish as well and gets them in the corner of the mouth or misses them. The head design determines how that jig rolls through cover and it determines how it exits that fish's mouth as you set the hook or tries to exit that fish's mouth. And the head design on the hybrid jig, the angles that it's created at, does a really good job of hitting that fish somewhere from here to here, but also coming through cover amazingly well. Power plant lakes. Power plant lakes will be a good option. Yeah, I mean, the fish will be spawning on power plant lakes. Uh, you could probably, you know, a lot of power plant lakes, like Martin Creek, you probably go through, like, I've been throwing topwaters on Martin Creek. Now, I didn't go to Martin Creek this week, but in the past weeks, I've been going to Martin Creek, and somebody on last night's live stream said they were catching them on a bus bait at Martin Creek, so... I've been throwing a frog quite a bit over there when I was at Martin Creek. Like, it's a it's a good topwater bite over there. 
Uh, they, I mean, it's just spawning. It's just March. Like, when you go to these power plant lakes, you just need to think March. That's, that's what you need to be thinking about. Thomas Roby says, bought first six cents hybrid jigs last week. Used the Year Lake Fort Guide code for your 10% discount. That's right. And even with Christmas time, got them in four days. That's awesome. Doesn't surprise me a bit. Great company. And if you do order something from Six Cents Fishing, please do use the code Your Lake Fort Guide. You'll get a 10% discount on all orders. I have no idea how many times I've said that. It's insane. What depth are they hanging out? They've been pretty shallow this week. They've been pretty shallow this week. Uh, like I said earlier, I, said, I mentioned this earlier, but on the creek channel fish I've been fishing, a lot of six foot to eight foot creek channel bins is what I've been what I've been fishing the most. Um, they've been pretty shallow, and you can even get up in three and four foot around the grass and catch them some too. So, uh, what rod do you use on that cheddar bait around vegetation? I use a seven five medium heavy, seven five medium heavy on my lipless crankbaits and my cheddar baits. You're very welcome, Texas Air Gunner. All right. Y'all drop me some more questions, man. What else we want to talk about? I don't know. What else is going on in the world? With braid, not yet. The water's not cold enough yet, Dusty Newton. So Dusty Newton's asking, am I using braid on my chatterbait, my lipless crankbait? The grass is still pretty firm and pretty lively, so I'm getting away with fluorocarbon. That grass will start to get softer the colder it gets as that grass starts to kind of die back in the, in the colder water. And when it starts to get softer, I'll switch over to braid. Right now, I'm using fluorocarbon, 20-pound fluorocarbon. Typically, when that water starts getting down into the 40s, when it breaks over into the 40s, that's when that grass starts really softening up, and that's when I go to braid. Big John says, do I do the Year Lake Fort Guide code speech? Do I do the discount code speech in my sleep? I don't know because I'm sleeping, dog, but I bet you I probably do. It wouldn't surprise me. Here's a good question from Thomas Roby. Good question right here. With a warmer winter, do you think an early spawn water temp like you talked about in the seminar, warmer nights? Yeah, it could be, but listen, <clears throat> this whole deal could change. I've seen it stay in the 50s throughout December, January, February. Then we get a cold front beginning of March, drops back in the 40s, and we don't have any real significant spawners till the end of March. I've seen that scenario play out. The coldest water of the year was in the middle of March. I've seen that happen. In fact, that was year before last, I want to say, when that happened. So, possibly, it's good, but there's no way to know until we get to that time of year and we see what weather we get. So, yes, if we get to February, end of January, February, the days start getting longer, right? That's another thing that keys them in, too, when those daylight periods start growing. That keys them to start thinking about that deal. Uh, and with the water staying in the 50s right now, if it doesn't drop more, and then we get a good warming trend around a moon cycle, they will start spawning at the end of January. Uh, if you get that water 58, 59, especially if it gets anywhere close to 60 on a warming trend, anywhere near a moon cycle at the end of January, there'll be some fish jump on beds, I guarantee you. And there'll be some big ones. Usually that first wave has some big ones with it. And I don't know why that is, but it does. Where's your co-anchor skeeter bug? I should have brought, I had all these rods out tonight. She'd have been running through the rods. I should have brought her out here though. We'll, I'll bring her out here next week on the live stream. Actually, that's a lie. No, I won't, because I'll be out of town next week. Live streams next week will be coming to you from an undisclosed location. What would be your go-to on Athens on Sunday? I, man, I'd still be on a jerkbait, dude. That jerkbait, I love th I've really become a huge fan of a jerkbait these days. I would definitely be wanting to throw a jerk bait. Lipless crank bait's another good option getting, when you get around grass. Um, Alabama rig. So a lot of the same baits that we're talking about for fork are going to play on Athens too. Does a 3 8 ounce chatter bait ever outperform a half ounce in any situation? Not, not at all. I mean, there's a place for both. I throw a 3 8 ounce chatter bait a lot more than I throw a half ounce chatter bait. But that's because a lot of the grass I fish is shallower. Basically, the half-ounce chatterbait is just for me to run the bait deeper. Uh, and, and I will actually use the half-ounce chatterbait in the heat of summertime around shallower grass to force me to fish it faster and allow it, to allow it to still contact shallow grass 
while I'm fishing it faster because uh, I want to speed it up in the summer. So there's definitely situations for both. <laughs> Big John says, what if you hate a jerk bait? Then throw a jig, dog. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If you hate a jerk bait, here's my, here's my real suggestion to that. If you hate throwing a jerk bait, my suggestion is to go to the lake with two or three jerk bait rods and nothing but a big box of jerk baits and force yourself to fish them until you get confident in them. Because a jerk bait is one of the most time tested, long standing, successful baits in this game. And if you're not comfortable throwing a jerk bait, then you are not a complete fisherman. You're, you're hurting yourself as a fisherman. <laughs> Best question on live stream should get a 20% coupon code. Just that's pretty good. I'm gonna see if we can put that together. That's good. On creek channels, do you always fish the bends or do you just fish the straight part of the channel or do you just go where you know there's timber on the graph? <clears throat> um, a little bit, a little bit, one creek channel to the next can be different. I, I try to concentrate the vast majority of my time on the bends and, and specifically on the outside part of the bend is where I want to be fishing, where I want my bait at. I like to set my boat up. If the bend goes like this, I want to set my boat up in here and cast to all the angles of the bend. That's my primary spot in the bend. Now, a lot of times if the bends are pretty close together, I'll just kind of fish my way from one of the next and I will flip a little bit down the straight part of the channel, just kind of casually doing that. Especially when the lake's low like it is now, you can see a lot of the timber. You can really target fish your way from one bend to the next. But where I really spend my time is around those outside bends. What line are you throwing a jerkbait on? Well, the other day I was fishing it over the top of grass, and I wanted it to stay a little bit shallower, so I was fishing it on mono, 12-pound mono. Uh, but when I'm fishing it around bridges and I'm wanting to achieve maximum depth, I fish it on 12-pound fluorocarbon. What's my favorite bait for bass? Uh, my favorite bait for bass is the one that gets the next bite. I'll throw it all. Gun to my head, make me pick one bait that I feel like I can trust to catch fish day in, day out the rest of my life, probably a chatterbait. I would much rather whine than slow down, and a chatterbait would probably be the one. Jared Carson said he caught his first jerkbait fish on Monday at Athens. Also got my first treble hook in my hand <laughs> a couple fish later. <laughs> Them jerkbaits will get you. They'll bite back a little bit. They will bite back a little bit, no doubt. No doubt. Listen, Texas Air Gunner, I might steal that from you. Look here. He says the old chatter donkey. I might have to start calling it the chatter donkey. I love that. That's That's awesome. Hopefully you don't mind if I bite your style off a little bit right there. I may take that for myself. That's a good one. <laughs> Cody Mays is trying to guess my number two bait. His number two would probably be a shaky head. Mm -mm, I don't think so. If I got one winding bait, I need one slow down bait. If I had to slow down with one bait the rest of my life, just because the way I like to fish, it would be a jig. It would be a jig. feel like I'm missing a conversation that's going on here. Air Gunner says he's cool with it. I can steal the old Chatter Donkey. Chatter Donkey. Bob, Bobby, it's all good in the eyes and hood coming through. Talking about Chatter Donkey is an H-Town thing. And then we got my, the party has officially started. We got Bobby, it's all good in the eyes and hood from, from Deuce Up, H-Town Down. Then right below him drops in my ex-tournament partner, Timmy Rhodes, talking about brown water in the house. If I know you, Tim, brown water probably is in the house. <coughs> Just saying. And I do know you. So, there's that. Provoke maybe number one. Yeah, so I do like to provoke jerkbait a lot. What's number two and number three brand of jerkbaits? Uh, the Vision 110 Mega Bass, Vision 110, and Lucky Craft Pointer. And those could be a tie. They're both really, really good.
Cody May said, I secretly love the drop shot. <laughs> yeah, the drop shot. Timmy says he's been on at Brownwater since 11 a.m. Somehow, Tim, that just doesn't surprise me at all with you. That doesn't surprise me, not even a little bit. What I really want to know is how was that win when you – because you and Maxfield went out the other on Wednesday. Yes, yesterday, y'all went out. How was that win yesterday, Tim? Because I was over here at the house working in the office, and, and it felt like my roof was going to cave in at times. So I can't imagine what that felt like being on the water in that wind. And y'all suckers, I know what y'all did. Y'all went over there to Brandy Branch and tried to sight fish. You couldn't see nothing because you had rollers coming in over the deck. <laughs> tried to look at beds. <laughs> Is Six Sense coming out with a deeper diving jerk bed again anytime soon? They discontinued the old one. I would like to see it. I don't know. I'll have to ask. I, I would love to see that. Uh, deeper diving jerk baits are something you need at times, especially I am using a, uh, I am using the, uh, God dang it, I'm so bad with the names. I just said it and I can't remember it. Uh, the Mega Bass, whatever the Mega Bass, I'm using the Plus One or the the the, uh, the Vision 110 Plus. I'm using the deeper Mega Bass um, around those bridges. When, when I, because you can see how deep those fish are suspending around those bridges around the pilings and stuff. And when they are down eight, 10, 12 foot, I'm using that deeper jerk bait. Big John says, I just need to hit the power plants or head south. <laughs> I hear you, brother. Tim says that wind wasn't too bad till about noon. God dang, when it went to blowing, it went to blowing, Jack. Thomas Roby says the Mega Bass Junior Plus One has been fire last week on Belton and Stillhouse. I believe it. It's a dude. This is this is the time of year to throw a jerk bait. Right now is the time of year to throw a jerk bait. December is a jerk bait month, no doubt about it. Texas Air Gunner says the cove I live in was white capping and the main lake was surfable. Yeah, I bet, man. It's been blowing. It blew even worse today, it felt like. Cody Mays <clears throat> looks like he's backing out on us. He's leaving us. He said, hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. We'll see y'all after the New Year. That's right. Have a good one, Cody Mays. We appreciate you. Appreciate you. Good friend of mine, good friend of the channel. We appreciate everything you do, brother. Thank you so much. Y'all drop a couple more questions in here. We'll do a couple more questions and answers, and uh, we'll probably wrap this thing on up and go go wait on Santa to show up. Where's the best place to get lures around here or online? You know, the full selection of Six Inch, obviously SixInchFishing.com, is a great, great place to buy all their stuff. But as far as a local tackle store, the one that's probably the best these days is probably Lake Fork Resort uh, here at Lake Fork. Timmy says they were on Brandy Branch, and he caught them on a sea rig and a discharge and a big shaky head magnum worm. Oh, big perm. That's awesome. I wonder, that, that had to be probably, what, 80-something degrees over there at that discharge, I bet. Fifteen pound on the lipless, you got a brand you prefer. I throw the assassin a lot. I throw fifteen pound on the quarter ounces, the little ones, and I throw twenty pound on the half ounce lipless crankbaits. As far as branded fluorocarbon, I use Seaguar Red Label. Now Red Label does have a lot of memory, but it is tough as nails, and the memory doesn't affect me near as much because I'm fishing so many days. I don't get as much memory as a lot of you guys that are fishing on the weekends do. So I, I just the Red Label's cheaper, so I buy the Red Label, and it's. It has amazing strength and, and not strength and all that stuff. It's a really tough line. No doubt about that. Very strong. 81. 81 at the discharge at Brandy Branch. Man, that's good. Everybody's saying Lakeport Resort has a good selection of six cents baits. It sure does. It's got a bunch of six cents baits in there. It sure does. Well, all right. If y'all ask any more questions on the way out, man, I'll try to answer them. But hey, uh, golly, dude, we'll have one more live stream before the new year, but I just can't thank y'all enough. It's been 
obviously it's been a challenging year in a lot of different ways for everybody, I think. But overall, as far as the business goes, as far as my life as a, as a man in the fishing industry goes, it's been a great year. It's been a unbelievable year. The business has been great. The app is doing great. The guide trip, the guide book has been full. Uh, we've caught a lot of big fish. It's been, I've been, I've had a really, really good year. And that is because of you guys. Uh, you guys are the one that make that year good. Y'all are the ones that book the trips. Y'all are the ones that spread the word about the content. And just by watching it, it helps it get out to more people. So thank y'all. That's all I can say, man. Thank y'all so much. You know, we gave away a ton of baits at the last seminar of the year. Um, I'm going to try to do some fish with subscriber stuff. I've got a little out-of-town trip coming up here right over New Year's. But once I get back in town, we're going to try to do some fish with subscriber stuff. Get some of you guys out in the boat with me uh, for a day and film a video. Have a good time. Cut up. Whatever. Give each other a hard time. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a text your old lady challenge or a fish slap in the face challenge. Or we'll figure it out. But we'll go have some fun. Anyways. Can't say it enough. Thank y'all so very much. We will see y'all next time, one more time for 2020, right here on your Lake Fort Guide.